Hi, it's John again from Junior Game Creators. Uh, last month we had a little look through our cat and mouse game and now we've got another little critter here, uh, our little flappy bird, uh, that we're going to have a look at creating a, a, a kind of cut down version, but uh, a pretty cool version nonetheless of the classic game of Flappy Bird. So we've got various different assets already set up for you. So we've got a background with two backdrops, uh, a menu backdrop and the background for the game. We've got our Flappy Bird with our various different frames of animation so that as we cycle through those, we'll be, be able to make it look like he flies. We've got our pipes that are endeavoring to get into the way of Flappy Bird as he tries to get home to his uh, nest. Um, so we've got different pipes that will we'll move across the screen as we go, uh, like so. Um, and um, we've got the floor, we've got the ground, and we want to make the ground look as if it's moving because Flappy Bird is going to stay still. Uh, he's just going to jump up and down as we uh, press the mouse button uh, with the aim of getting through the pipes. The pipes are going to move across to the left and it'll look like the ground's moving as well. I've also got a little start button, uh, a little menu item so we can start the game and uh, when, the, when it hits the pipes or hits the ground, uh, it'll go back to the start and we can start again. So I'm going to start uh, with the ground. Uh, we can see the costume here for the ground. We can see it on our uh, stage area. Uh, so we're going to start with a little bit of code there just to get the ground working before we start worrying about everything else. So make sure you've got the ground clicked and then click on scripts. We're going to start with our when green flag is clicked and then we're going to just change so that every time we click the green flag, we're gonna change the size of our ground to be a little bit more than 100%. So basically it will overlap the edges of the screen. We are then gonna tell it to go to a particular um, X and uh, Y location. So we're gonna set X to 14. We, we may have to play around with these a little bit, but we'll uh, see how we go. And we're gonna set Y to minus 170, which is around about down here somewhere, minus 130, yeah, minus 150 be around about there and it's the, it's the it's the actual middle of it that will be the the position so uh, that 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 should be about right and then we're going to show it to make sure that the ground is being shown and then we're going to put our forever loop inside of here so on control choose forever and then we're going to go through a little uh, repeat so inside of our forever loop we're going to repeat until, uh, so I've put the wrong one in there, let me take that one out. So we're going to repeat until, which is this one. And inside of here, we're going to put a little operator in there, which is going to see if the X position of our ground, you might need to scroll down a bit to see that. Yeah, if our X position is less than zero so at the moment it's sort of 14 our sort of middle position of this is just slightly positive as soon as it gets less than zero so past the center of the screen um, until it does that it's going to keep doing this so we're going to change the x position and i'm just going to put that as minus two so two pixels at a time as we go through. And if it goes through that, and eventually it goes from position 14, incrementally reducing it by two, so moving it to the left, once it jumps out to the bottom of there, we're then gonna reset the X position back to 14. So we've got a, a little loop there that'll move the background. 
then it'll jump it back to 14 and then it'll keep repeating that essentially forever so let's give that a go I click on the green flag and there you can see it now looks as if our start button and our pipes and our bird are flying through the air as the ground moves across them so that loop the forever loop is basically moving this ground two pixels at a time when it gets to zero which is the x position zero which is the middle of the screen it's resetting the x position back to 14 and then changing it by two pixels as we go well done pretty cool so we've um, had a look at getting the ground moving. Now I'm going to concentrate on the pipes. We essentially want them to move to the left at the same speed. But as we can see with the pipes, if you choose the pipe sprite, we've got various costumes. Those costumes mean that the gap between the pipes are at slightly different positions, depending on the costume that is selected. They're going, to, they're going to move towards us and they're going to appear at random times. So every three seconds, maybe one every four seconds, another one at three seconds, another one at five seconds. So different periods of time. So that sometimes pipes will be closer together, other times they'll be further apart. So whilst you've got the pipe sprite selected, click on scripts. And then we're going to start another with one of our green hats. We're actually going to change these later on when we get our menu system working. And we're going to start initially, because we don't want the pipes there initially, we want to hide the pipe uh, when we click it, so these will disappear. Uh, you, if you click on this little information button on there, you can always show them again. So if they're hidden, you can always show them again if you want to uh, recover the sprite and, and work with it. Um, I'm going to leave it shown for the moment then we'll see how that hide command gets rid of them once we start so I'm then going to get my forever loop because we always need to be waiting for a random amount of time so I'm going to put wait in there and to get the randomness in there I'm going to add a pick random so it's going to pick a number and let, let's go with between three and five seconds and then I'm going to create a clone of myself, like so. So this is going to repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat and keep going. And then every few seconds, it's going to create a clone of that sprite. When it does, when I start as clone, so when it creates that copy of that sprite, we are then going to switch to a random costume. So switch costume two. And again, inside of there, I can put a random block in there. So switch costume two. And we had four costumes, so it's gonna pick a random costume between one and four. And then we need to position the sprite. So we're going to start at the right hand side, which is X240 uh, at the right hand side there. So 240. And then the Y position, we're going to center it. So it's going to be zero, which is straight across the, uh, the, the middle uh, the vertical. So uh, zero is straight across there. So that will be uh, in the middle of the screen. And then we want to show it. So you want to make it appear because it was hidden when we clicked on the green flag and now we're going to show it. And now we're going to have another little repeating block of code that will allow the clone to keep moving to the left until the X position gets to uh, minus 240 over here. So we're going to put a little operate in there and a little equals and then we want to know what the x position of this uh, sprite is so i'm going to choose x position so until x position equals minus 240 and minus 240 is the left hand edge of that screen and then we're going to change the x position 
by minus two. Same as the ground, so it will be it will be moving two pixels at a time, which should be identical to the speed of the um, of the ground. And then finally, um, we then want to delete it. So we want to get rid of that clone, and hopefully another random piece of time will have come through. So if I go to Control there, and then delete this clone. We now should be able to see these pipes disappear and then every so often drift across the screen at the same speed as the ground. Let's give it a go. So I'm just going to click uh, uh, the green flag here and let's see the ground should start moving and also our pipes. So there they disappeared. My ground's moving, which is kind of cool. And there we go. Exactly the same speed. We've got our pipes coming through so that was the same costume slightly different there um, our randomness there pick the same costume now we've got a different costume coming through so as this is progressing we are now going to find that we've got a different path and different spacing between the pipes that we're going to have to get our little bird to navigate coming along nicely now so now we can start looking at Flappy himself and see if we can get his motion correct. Moving on to Flappy himself, our little bird, our little friendly character here that we've got to help fly uh, through the pipes. Uh, this gets a, a, a little tricky, so just bear with me. We've done a little bit of preparation for you. If we have a look under data, you'll see that we've already, already added a few variables. I've added a gravity variable because if we're not flying, if we're not flapping our wings, gravity is going to bring us towards the ground. So we're going to have a negative value that's going to change the Y position of our flappy uh, until it hits the ground, in which case it would be game over, or if he hits a pipe. Uh, I've also got a Y velocity. So this is essentially uh, a number that when we actually flap our wings will allow him to go upwards and stay in the air. And we'll have to keep tapping the mouse to make sure that he stays uh, up in the air. Otherwise, he'll hit the ground. So we've added those variables and we're going to start using those in a, in a second. So let's uh, make sure you've got Flappy selected. And again, we're going to just going to start with the green flag, but we will alter that a little bit later on. And then the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that Flappy is shown because we may hide him later on when the, the, the game ends. Uh, and then we're going to go to uh, roughly this position, uh, maybe a little bit uh, lower down. Um, we're going to go to minus 50 X, so just off center. And we're going to start slap bang in the middle uh, of the uh, of the height of our screen, uh, and then we're just going to wait. Otherwise, if we if we don't put a wait in there, we're just going to wait a, just a second. Um, then by the time you've clicked the green flag and 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 he's off and running, uh, he'll have hit the ground, and you won't have a chance to to click your mouse. So we're just going to give it a, a a little pause there, and then add the forever forever loop. Almost said that. Uh, the forever loop then is going to always be checking to uh, see, you know, is Flappy going up because we've clicked the button? Is he falling because we're not pressing the mouse? Uh, is he touching the ground? Is he touching that? So it's forever going to be checking what the status of our uh, little Flappy bird is. So the first thing we're going to do is... Uh, is every time it goes through this loop, it's going to be changing the y velocity by whatever we set gravity to. So if y velocity was seven, and then we change it by whatever we set our gravity value to, minus 0.6, then it'll be seven minus 0.6, that it will be actually changing the height that Flappy is flying. So we will change y by, go to data again, whatever the current value of y velocity is. And the other thing we will do is change him to the next costume. That means it will cycle through all of the different costumes that Flappy 
pass. Now, if we were to play this right now, I've got no way of interacting with Flappy. He's just going to hit the floor. Um, you know, I'm not sure we've even set at this stage what the Y value is or what gravity is. So let's just do that. So I'm just going to do that on the stage. So you know, once once again, uh, choose the backdrop, go to scripts, add the little flag inside of there, and then we're just going to set. We're going to set the y value to seven. I'm guessing we may we may change these later on, and I'm going to set gravity to. Uh, I'm going to go minus zero point six. So it's a, a negative value that we're taking away with that, and that's the amount that uh, the, the that Flappy will fall um, if we don't press the mouse. So I've, I've just set those initial values. Go back to Flappy. So it's going to change the value of y velocity, which was 7, by minus 0.6, and then change y to that value. Change the costume, go back through take minus 0.6 off again and change the y value so he's going to drop down as soon as i you know press the green arrow let's just take a little look at that click the green arrow there we go so we saw a little bit of movement i'm going to do it again it waited one second he popped up in the air and then fell down and at the moment he's still flying along the bottom of the screen the pipes are going past uh, so we've got a little bit more code to write, but we saw him flying. You see his little wings flapping away, um, and um, he's, uh, he, he's he's got the potential to fly. Uh, so we now need to go on and add a little bit more uh, code in, inside of here to actually make him fly. Um, so uh, again, I'm just going to add the um, the little green flag so it's a different different bit of code because that's handling his him falling now we need to handle him flying so it's going to be another forever loop and then what we're going to be doing here is every time that we essentially you know go through this loop we're going to reset the y velocity back to that seven value it seemed to all right that he seemed to fall at a decent rate um, and we're going to play a sound. Uh, the sound that we're going to play is not the dead sound. There's a couple. There's a flap and there's a dead sound. So at the moment, every time we press the mouse, he's going to play sound. So what we do is it, it's going to automatically start with this little jump. It sets Y to, to 7. It's going to play a flap sound, but it's only actually going to do that after we've done something. So I'm going to find a wait until block here. And what I'm going to do in sensing, there's some really cool little blocks in here. I'm going to be doing this one. So wait until mouse down. So not, no code will run after this until you click the mouse. And then I'm going to do another wait. Now this is a little tricky, but it's kind of cool. Because that wait until here I'm actually going to put a not, a little bit of a logical operator there, and I'm going to say not mouse down. So what this is basically going to do, it's going to wait until I press the mouse, and then it's going to wait until I release the mouse. That stops me just holding the mouse down and keeping Flappy flying. Um, and then as soon as I let go, it will go back and it will set the Y velocity to 7 and play a sound flap. All the time that these things are waiting, this loop is running up here all the time, adjusting the height that Flappy is by whatever the value of y velocity, and that's in getting smaller and smaller based on what we've set as gravity. So if we play this one now, so click the green flag, it's gonna wait a second. Now if I press my mouse, his little wings are flapping, he's I got through a pipe. I can't believe it. Actually, I'm not very good at this game. And um, oh, 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 yeah, I haven't actually written the code to test yet. So, but you can see there. Every time I click, he goes down. If I click quickly, but I can't leave my mouse down because he just jumps down there. So we're getting the remnants of our little game together here. We've got a flying flappy, and we've got 
a gravity interacting on him, bringing him down to the floor, and I can keep clicking it to keep him flying. Now we're really getting somewhere. Next step is to start building the collisions that may be required inside of there. Okay, there are essentially two different outcomes that end this game, and that is when Flappy either hits a pipe, they're hidden at the moment, um, so uh, they can't see them, but if you remember, I can just do show, just to see those. I think I think actually Fl Flappy's uh, hidden at the moment, or is he just behind the start button? Yeah, I think he's just behind the start, there he is. So if, um, so if Flappy, you don't need to do all that, just uh, just making sure I'm using this for uh, information. So uh, the, the Flappy, if he hits a pipe, or the pipe that hits him, it's a game over. And if we don't click enough and he hits the floor, uh, then it's game over. So I need to make sure you've got Flappy selected. And then we're going to add a little bit of code to this first block here that we had. And this is going to be saying all the time that he's moving up and down, depending on you know whether we've clicked the mouse right. Uh, we're going to do a little test in here. So whenever we're testing something, we're using an if statement. So we're going to test here to see if Flappy is touching either the pipes or the ground. So to do that, we're going to, we're going to use an or in the operators. Uh, we've got another logical operator inside of here, so we can drag that in to here. So if... And if you remember in sensing, we had those really cool code blocks that we can use to test various bits and pieces. And the one we're looking for is touching. We're going to add two of those. Oops, I missed one. You've got to be a little bit careful where they end up. You pop those in there. And then you can, if you can see there, if you get the left-hand side of that block inside of there, if touching pipes or touching the ground, then we're going to play that sound, which was our dead sound, um, because he's run into the ground or run into a pipe. Uh, and then we're also just going to put a little bit of code for the moment that is going to stop all. So it's essentially going to end our game. Now let's have a little play and see if I can uh, get through a pipe. So hit the green arrow. I must get rid of that start button at some point, but it's okay, we can just ignore it. So I'm going along. If I hit a pipe, game ends. Let me try again. If I don't click and I hit the floor, the game ends. Now, interestingly here, I didn't hear that dead sound. Um, the reason for that is uh, that we're stopping all the code before it's got a cha chance to play it. So if you change that code to play sound until done, uh, you'll have a, a, a better chance of hearing that. So click go, flapping, hit the ground. Ouch, that sounded nasty. So he's hit the ground. And if I go and click through here and hit a pipe. Ouch, that one hurt. And now if I click, let me see if I can actually get through one of these. Oh, that looks tricky. Got through that one. Oh, hit that one. This is this is hard. We may adjust some of our values later on, but now we've got the detection, the collision detection, right? By basically saying if so, forever it's going through this loop. If touching pipes or touching ground, play sound dead until done. So that's that thwack noise, and then it's stopping all the code. So slowly but surely now. We're pulling our game together, and now we, we just need to sort out this, this start button. Because we want that to display at the beginning, and then we want it to disappear once we're in our game, and then come back at, at the end. So let's have a look at doing that. Right, so we're going to have a look at this, this start button. And the sequence of events we want to have is really when we press the green flag, we want that start button to appear uh, somewhere in the in the middle of the screen. And then we don't actually start until we click the start button and then the game will start. The start button will disappear and get out of the way. So there's a few changes we need to make 
to bring that menu system to life and that will give us a nice flow to the game that people can pick up you can click the green flag then click on the start button and, and start playing so i'm going to start if you go to our backdrop we added a little bit of code in there and then what i'm going to do is basically say when the green flag is clicked i want it to actually switch the backdrop to menu if we have a little look at our backdrop, so our menu backdrop has a little instruction on it, click mouse to flap. So as soon as we click on the, um, the green button, uh, sorry, the green flag, it automatically changes that click mouse to flap. And I've got the start button showing on the screen at the moment, but actually the, the game started there, which we didn't actually want it to do. So we're getting there. So switch backdrop to menu. now. When the backdrop changes to menu, now we're gonna have a look at the code for our start button. Because our start button, we want to appear when the backdrop switches to menu. So we're not using a green hat here. We've gone to events and basically said, when the backdrop switches to and chosen the menu backdrop, then we want our button to show. And then we're going to use another event and that button is essentially going to stay there, the start button, until we click on it. So when this sprite is clicked, then we're going to do something called a broadcast. We're going to tell all the other bits of code throughout the game that we're about to start the game. So um, broadcast, and I'm going to choose new message here, and I'm going to put start. So I'm typing start game. So that will send out a message to all of the different sprites, all of the different assets, and then we can use that broadcast to say, when I receive that broadcast, to do other things. And the next thing I want to do with my button is I actually want it to hide. Uh, that's in looks, not motion. Uh, so choose hide, which is which is good. Uh, so you know when the backdrop switches to menu, it will show. When the sprite is clicked, it will broadcast start game. Now there's a couple of things we're now going to change on all of our different sprites. Instead of having, so I'm going to start with Flappy. Instead of having the green flag here, uh, what I'm going to do with Flappy is actually bring in the when I receive start game. So you can see that under the events. And then I'm gonna move the code across to that. And I'm gonna get rid of the green flag now. Just move it into this area here. So this will only happen, this code, once it receives that broadcast to start the, the actual game, when I click on the start button. And I'm gonna do the same down here. So just drag when I receive start game and then drag into there the block and get rid of that. So when I receive start game, do this. When I receive start game, do this. Let's do the same for the pipes. So when I receive start game, inside of there, gonna get rid of that. And then this one has the when I start as clone, so that's okay. We've got this, when this backdrop switches to menu, it will show when the sprites click broadcast start game. So that will start all the other sprites uh, going and then it hides itself. And then my ground, again, I'm gonna do exactly the same here. I don't want the ground to start, yeah, until I start the game. So when I receive start game. So just to have a little recap there, on the backdrop, we've said, and this is the only green flag we've got in here now. So this starts the game, switch the backdrop to menu, and then it sets these variables to their initial values. This isn't gonna do anything until it receives the broadcast start game. My pipes isn't gonna do anything until it receives start game, and this doesn't do anything until it starts as a clone. My start menu checks to see if the backdrop has switched to menu and then it shows it. And then when it is clicked, it broadcasts start game and then hides. 
so that looks pretty good. And then our ground doesn't do anything until it receives start game. So everything is now generated from the green flag when we click it here, and then it will wait until we are clicking on the start button. Let's see. So I'm gonna click on the green flag. Nothing seems to happen, but my menu has changed to click mouse to flap, and I've got a start button. If I click on start, my game starts. Ah, notice that the background hasn't changed at the moment, so we need to address that and fix that one. But when I click and stop, if I click the green flag again, I've got my start button, click start, and off I go again, hit the ground, and I stop. So there's only one little bit of code that we need to adjust now, which is the backdrop. So when we actually click that, that that green flag on the, uh, click the button, the menu button, we want to make sure that the uh, backdrop changes to our, um, uh, the backdrop changes to the, the game. So uh, let me just uh, add that little bit of code here. So inside of here, when I receive start game, I want to switch the backdrop to background. Give that a go. Start. There we go. So that's disappeared. If I hit the floor again and hit go, there's my click mouse to flap. There's my start button. Click start. And then Flappy starts to fly. So we've got a nice little menu system going here, all starting with the green flag that changes the backdrop to menu. If I go to there, the button waits for the backdrop to change to menu and then shows itself. And when it's clicked, it broadcasts start game and then hides itself. And all of these other sprites have a when I receive start game to do different actions and start the game. So we've got the one green flag and then these other little hats to detect when that broadcast happens and to start running the other bits of code as we go through. So the only thing we're really missing now is a score uh, and a way of sort of stopping the game uh, nicely instead of just stopping the code. It'd be nice to have the start menu show up again and uh, allow us to have another go. So let's, uh, let's see how we get on with that. So we're just going to sort out this menu now because when we our game ends, we're kind of left in limbo. We have to go back to the green flag to start it. So uh, the, the game end code at the moment is on Flappy. So if we click on Flappy, we've got this stop all uh, as soon as it ends. Well, I'm going to change that and I'm going to use another broadcast. We've got a broadcast that starts the game. So I'm just going to take that out, just drop it in here and then go back to your events and then add the broadcast inside of there. So at the moment it says start game. Well, I don't want to broadcast start game again. I'm going to do a new message uh, and we're going to call that game over. You'll use this again and again in your different games that you create. So once we hit the pipe, once we hit the ground, we broadcast the message. We're not stopping the scripts. We're just broadcasting the message game over. Now, one of the things we're going to do now is when it's game over, uh, we are going to hide things and get them out of the way and just leave the menu. So, you know, when I receive not start game, game over with Flappy, uh, I'm just going to hide him. When it receives start game, it's going to show him. When I receive game over, it's going to hide him. And we're going to do the same for various different pieces of our code. So as I go through here, when I receive game over, I'm just going to choose hide. Start menu, this is slightly different, but the same piece of code essentially. When I receive game over with our start menu, I actually want it to show. So that will pop up. And then our ground, I'm okay with the ground just, just carrying on. It's just going to, you know, keep, keep going through. Um, so that all looks good. There's nothing really I need to do 
he uh yeah i think it would be good if um you know when the game over um that i actually switch the backdrop again to menu like so i'm also going to add a the stop all uh, command to this bit here uh, just to stop stop uh, yeah, extra pipes creating etc but we're left with our menu button on the screen that we can then use so let's give that a go click the green flag I've got click mouse to flap little menu screen I've got my menu button here click start off I go flip flip if I hit the floor everything's disappeared click mouse to flap start off I go again so I can fly along, fly along. If I hit a pipe, I'm back to my main screen and I can click the start button and off I go. Now the only final piece now that I need to put in, is, oh, but I'm not good enough to do it, is that when I go through the pipes, we actually need to get a score. The first thing we're going to do with the score is we're just going to set a score to zero. I've already created the var variable, if you remember, I've already added score inside of here. And then when we click the green flag, we want to reset the uh, score to be zero. So every time you're starting with a, a, a new score. And then we're going to put um, a, a really cool little bit of code, a very useful bit of code, um, into our pipes uh, code uh, to ensure that um, it's always checking to see, because we get through the pipe if the X position of the pipe, if I just show those again, if so we can see that, if the X position of the pipe gets beyond what uh, the X position of Flappy is. So as soon as it goes past there, uh, we want to get a point. Uh, we get a point for, for going through that gap. Um, so let me just hide that again. So what we're going to do is write a piece of code inside of here. So it's when I start as clone, it needs to check each of the different uh, sprites that have been copied and start moving through to the left. And we're going to use an if statement. So make sure you've got pipes selected and then add an if statement. Be careful where you drag this because we want it to go just in here. We don't want it to go wrap around these different bits. So just you can see the little highlighted bit just underneath where it says change X by minus two. All right, we don't want it down here. We want it just underneath there. And then we're going to put another little bit of uh, a conditional operator inside of here to test to see if the X position of the pipe so if you go, you may, may need to scroll down a little bit just to see this. So it's the X position of that clone. And to see if it is equal to the X position. Now this is really inside of sensing. This is a really, really cool little piece of uh, code that you can use. Yeah, is the X position of the pipe equal to the X position of Flappy? So. If that is the case, we want to play a sound. Play sound point. Just need to drag that down a little bit there. And then we want to change our score. Change. Doesn't matter what's in the drop down when you drag it, you can then change that by one. Super. Now you'll notice against the data area at the moment the score isn't shown and if you tick that you can actually tick all of these and, and show the different variables it can help with debugging your games to work out what's going on I'm just going to leave the score one ticked and that's our score up in the top corner now this is going to be a test for me so please bear with me all I need to do is actually get through a gap in the pipe so let's give it a go I'm going to click my green flag I'm going to click my start button and now if I concentrate, it's one of the challenges of this game it can be amazingly frustrating but amazingly addicting. So if I can concentrate, I should, there we go, pa ping oh, only got two points. Um, now the reality there is um, I 
I should really have only got one. Let me see if I can get through again. Yay, there's a point. Can I get through? There's another one. Oh, got hit. Four points. Ah, so there's something going on here that every single time I go through this, it's adding up the points twice. So I can, I can fix that. Because uh, at the moment we've reset the score to zero, but when we're actually clicking on this sprite, if we set the score to zero here, it means as we cycle through our different attempts and scores, we will make sure that we've only got, so we've got zero. Let me see if I can score one and then I'll die. That shouldn't be difficult. Oh, I got one point, just about. Uh, now I click on start and now I'm back down to zero again. So there we've got a nice little loop in our game with our menu system. We've got our little flappy flapping away. We've got our pipes moving across. Now there's various bits to this game that, that you can change. You don't have to have the backdrop. You can go in and change the backdrops inside of here. Uh, you don't have to, you could change what flappy is and the different images there. Uh, feel free to try changing the velocity and the gravity to see how that makes the game harder or easier based on those different values. Um, don't make them too wacky or the game will become impossible. Um, but I always sort of go back to sort of, you know, seven and six and minus 0.6 is, is, is about right. Um, you can change the costumes of the pipes. You can change the speed that the pipes move. Um, the ground is just an aesthetic to give it a feeling. But there you go. You've made a great game. Challenge your parents. Challenge your guardians, challenge your brothers, your siblings, whoever, your friends, your mates, get them to have a go and show them what an amazing game creator you are. Well done and uh, have fun. Good luck with the rest of your games and we'd love to see some of the games that you create as you take these further and further. If you have any problems, any questions, just get your parents to email us. Always willing to help and help you to uh, get unstuck if you get stuck. Anyway, Ta-ra for now, and we'll be back in a couple of weeks with some more projects.